I was about uh, about 15, 16 years of age, and uh, one of my brothers was working in town, which was about 40 miles away, Riga, and uh, he said to me, oh, you better come to town and learn a trade, there's no good there, you working horses all the time, and I was very keen whether there was a boat or a not, or I was always there. Anyway, eventually I went to town, and uh, I found my brother by mere accident. I was, uh, Riga is a big city, something like Christchurch, and oh, thousands of people on the streets, especially uh, knocking off time in the evenings. And I was wandering along the street quietly, and all of a sudden across I looked up and I saw my brother, and I yelled out and ran over to him. And he took me home, and I was staying with him. And then he says, now, you got to go and look for a job yourself. You got to go around the factories and go in the offices and uh, and tell you who you are and what you want to do. And, and if you are lucky enough, you'll have a job. So I went two, three mornings around, and eventually I went to one factory. And uh, I uh, succeeded in getting a job. I started to work, and the working hours, as I thought, was very good. We had to work from 6 o'clock in the morning till 6 at night, including Saturdays. And I thought, oh, it was grand. I had plenty of time to sleep and play, whereas in the country, I had to work from daylight till dark. And that made up some 20 hours a day. And I was very much starving for sleep. And then uh, on Sundays too, we had certain jobs to do. Sometimes when we went to church on Sundays, which was seven miles away, uh, it was all right, the walking and the singing, but when the parson started to preach the sermon, and uh, we had to sit quiet and listen to it, and his melancholy voice sort of sent me off to sleep. <laughs> and... <laughs> Very often I, I was sleeping through the sermon and never heard what he said at all. Until one Sunday I fell over, nodding that much, that it created, created quite a, <laughs> uh, quite a business, you know, to gather me up and give me a dressing down and send me up like a big dog. So anyway, in town was quite different. I was very happy and worked away for Oh, on the different uh, places, you know, uh, what sort of work there is in an engineering factory, or uh, uh, chiseling sharp edges of machinery, and scrubbing, and scraping, and filing, and and one thing another. Until after about a couple of years, I got a bit better work. And then a uh, couple of years after, we had news that my mother had died in the country. So we had three days off. And uh, me and my brother, and we walked home and attended to the funeral, and then I thought they walked back, and of course back to work again. And uh, oh, things healed up quietly. And so I carried on until about the, uh, uh, coming towards the autumn. Then things started to go crook, really. The uh, workers went out on strike, and they were hitting out for less working hours and more pay, and also the pay to be delivered uh, on Saturdays when payday came round during working hours. Instead, uh, we had to hang around for half an hour, sometimes till over a hour before uh, we would get our pay. Then after we had our miserable bit of pay, we had to walk to town, to the supermarket, and uh, buy our... Uh, or goods to last uh, uh, at least another week or a fortnight. And uh, oh, the, uh, the marketplace was very good. It was recently built some, on uh, quite a few acres uh, of ground. There was about half a dozen buildings with uh, uh, smooth concrete floors and uh, china white tiled walls and plenty of windows all around and domed glass roofs and uh, the hygiene was uh, really good and uh, there was inside the buildings was shops from one end to the other along the side and a double row through the middle 
where you could buy anything you wished. There was um, meat of all descriptions, small goods, and and uh, fish and cheeses and butters and uh, and anything you like to uh, buy. We used to wander through, uh, particularly one of these here um, uh, grocery businesses. And then just inside the door was a, a bit of a snack bar. You, bar. you could sit down and order something uh, tasty to eat. <laughs> well, our usual Saturday evening uh, meal was order a pair of hot sausages with a dollar for master then and a thin slice, a thin slice of bread and butter with it. And we enjoyed that very much. So after the shopping, of course, we go home. And the weekend is to yourself. We used to often buy a pound of undercut steak or carbinat that's of a pig uh, cut off the same place as a undercut of a bullock. And we used to often eat that roll, put it on a chopping block, and <laughs> chop uh, some slices of onions on top and pepper and salt, and then take the steak on there and beat it all to pulp and put it on bread, and by Joe, was it so good. <laughs> well, so it went on, but uh, we couldn't afford much luxuries. I remember one Christmas day, we had a pair of salt earrings for dinner. <laughs> that was Christmas dinner. And, you know, at the pay, you know, the pay was very small. When I started first in the factory, they only paid three farthings a hour. That was uh, 33 farthings per uh, 11 hour working day. And you can tell how much you can buy for that. Then uh, every six months afterwards, uh, we had a, a farthing a hour rise until, uh, so it continued uh, year after year until I worked uh, just on three years or something. And then things went crook then. People went out on strike and demanded uh, less working hours and more pay and uh, and pay to be delivered than, uh, during working hours. And we were striking for quite a while until we got too hungry as a hounds. We had nothing to eat and I had no one to depend on. So but four of us boys took to our heels and took to the bush. Uh, <laughs> which was on the lakeside, some three, four miles away from town. We caught a few little fishes and gathered mushrooms, roasted them, and bandicooted the farmer's spuds now and again. And uh, we sometimes had some great feeds, until eventually uh, the strike went over, and we had to go back to work. So we started working again, but the trouble didn't finish then. The people were still out on strikes and... And quite a lot of oh, what we used to call agitators or orators, they were arrested by the Gestapo and quietly taken out to the sand hills and shot without any trial. So uh, things didn't look too bright. And in the place where I was boarding, I was with a family upstairs, and downstairs was a policeman with his family living. So one day he quietly came to me, he says, well, Bob, he said, I'll give you a tip. If you want to keep in one piece, you make yourself scarce, <laughs> old oh, man. So I thanked him, and I thought, oh, well, this is no place for me. So <laughs> I started to hunt around on the dockside and got familiar with some sailors that was on a ship going to uh, Antwerp, not to Antwerp, to Gent, that's in Belgium. And uh, eventually we made the agreement that they would stow us away. There was four of us all together that wanted to clear out. And I had no other means of getting out because I was before military age and you had no show to leave the country before you had served the military services. And that was about uh, 1902 or three, or something like that. And uh, the day came when the ship was sailing and the sailor gave us the signal and we went aboard and they stowed us away down below the four peak uh, under a trap door. There was a stairway leading down to the chain locker in the bow of the ship. 
and they had prepared a nice cabiole among bales of jute for us to sleep and sit and uh, hang around. And uh, it was after dinner when they uh, gave us the signal to come aboard. And then we could detect when the ship started to shiver, uh, we knew that it was on the way. And then about six o'clock at night, they yelled out to come up and have a feed. So we went in the sailors' quarters, sat down quietly and enjoyed our, our feed and we were telling stories and uh, playing cards and one thing or other until about midnight. Now they said, your place is down below among the rats again. <laughs> so down we go and, uh, and stay there all night and breakfast time they called us up again and uh, during the day while the ship was at sea we were living practically all the time in the sailor's quarter only they kept the watch in case uh, an officer would come forward and discover us but uh, everything went smoothly until one Sunday forenoon we arrived in Gent and the ship tied up, and uh, we had dinner, and everybody started to go ashore, the officers, including the old skipper, and uh, sailors said, now, now it's time, we'll go ashore too. So we all went ashore, and they took us round to a pub, shouted the drink all round, and after that, took us to a railway station, and bought us a ticket for Antwerp and put it, put us on the train and said, now off you go and you'll be right in Antwerp.